good afternoon from London, everybody. Jasper Lawler, market analyst at CMC, talking here, getting going with our weekly charting analysis. Final page of the risk warning for those Canadian and Singapore clients who are. So I was just looking at the um, the dollar yen in here. Um, mentioned it in the uh, the chat box just now. This pattern here, just going purely into sort of the uh, charting element of things. That is pretty much a tweezer top. Um, this this candle is slightly um, the high on this candle is slightly higher than the high on this candle. The one on Friday is slightly higher than the one on Thursday. But they're pretty much equal, um, and then it's also a, uh, a bearish engulfing candlestick. Just about um, when you're talking about candlestick patterns, Japanese candlesticks, you tend to ignore the the highs and lows. It's really more about the body, and um, you know the 24-hour market. So you know the the opening and closing levels from one day to the next always tend to be about the same. So. The close of this market ended up being the same as the open from this, so it didn't engulf on the top side, but then it really never does in the 24-hour currency market, except on a Sunday when the market reopens after the weekend's closed. But the important one is just down here. You know, you can see that the, the close on Friday was below the open on Thursday, and that's basically the, the engulfing pattern right there. And it is following through a bit today. You see we've sort of gapped lower on Sunday. Uh, on, t on today, and um, there's potential for this pattern to see us moving down towards this consolidation area around 1340. But typically, when you see a, you know, if you just look at here, for example, back in uh, on the 1st of October, um, you see a sort of bearish pattern take place. But really, the trend is still up. So, bearing some cataclysmic event, normally you'll get a first few hints that the trend's wearing out, so this would be a hint that this trend is sort of showing a bit of signs of exhaustion, which obviously it should be after the extent of the rise that we've seen. Um, so what you could get is more like a sort of double top pattern happening on the daily chart where maybe it will dip down a bit, maybe even it's done its worst here and moves up higher again only to fail. Or of course the whole pattern just could be blown out of the water and it could move to new highs. You know, nothing's perfect. It could just go up to 116 and drop again from there. So it's the first sign of exhaustion. It's not saying it's the absolute top. You know, moves a bit higher, but just it hasn't got the momentum to get much past there, and then rolls over and breaks a trend line. So you've got to put all these factors together. Don't just trade off one signal. But a little indication there. There's some um, dollar weakness coming into the market, and you can see that reflected in uh, well, gold's not looking so hot, but uh, crude oil prices are up today. And uh, you see in the, um, the the euro and the pound bouncing a little bit. Um, the the charts themselves look a bit more impressive, um, just because uh, a lot of the, the rebound higher kind of happened on on Friday alongside that move in, in dollar yen. So again, the trend is kind of down, so this may not last too long, but a bit of a sign of a a kickback in the U.S. dollar. And I think that probably relates a lot to the uh, the non-farm payrolls report on Friday. Which, um, which, was, which was okay, it was above 200,000, but some of the internals weren't that impressive as, as normal, and it did miss expectations, obviously. Um, so not as good as it could have been. Started off on the um, currency front, but only because not too much is happening in, um, in the equities today. Uh, we may as well start off with the US markets, you know, they tend to be what, uh, what lead things. Um, it's a, it's a pretty crazy looking chart we, we've got on our hands right now. This is what you really call a kind of V bottom or V reversal, because obviously that is just an extreme drop followed by an extreme rise. You don't see these too often. To some extent, happened here, and you know you get these kind of smaller versions of it, but nothing really where it drops off 10% and then comes right back again, um, only to brush through the highs. So. Can, can be difficult trading environment because you know maybe you you sort of see the reversal coming down here, you know you see a few levels broken up, you buy into the highs, but then it's just there's not really been a pullback, so 
you know, once you see the high, maybe a few people were looking for a drop back down to the consolidation areas down here. Um, but it's just it's just kept going. So, you know, really got to, it's one of those cases where, A, you've got to be aware of the direction of the trend, but B, you've got to be aware of the volatility in the markets. And, um, you know, when there's the kind of extreme one-way direction of the markets, if you're looking for, um, you know, if markets are only correcting 0.25% at a time, and you're looking for a 3% correction, it's just, it's out of context. Um, you know, and you've got to kind of adjust. If you want to get involved in this trend, you've got to kind of, um, you know, push your, uh, you know, get a bit more aggressive with the entries. Um, but obviously be aware that um, there is the risk that a, a larger correction will kick back and just have your, have your stop losses in there accordingly. But it can be difficult to adjust how big you expect the correction to be. But you've got to judge it on what's been happening recently. And, uh, you know, there's, there's barely been any more than a, you know, it's just a one-day correction there. Didn't even close lower there. One-day correction there. One-day correction there, and then eventually dropped, but closed higher there. So it's been a very aggressive trend. Um, I mean, the U.S. Uh, the U.S. corporate earnings have been fairly decent. Um, I think the last statistic I saw was it's about 60, 65 percent of the companies had beat on the earnings front. But it's only more like 50% on the revenues. So, you know, the companies are getting more efficient, if you like. Um, maybe a few layoffs, um, cutting costs. Um, and so the, the margins are good. But, um, you know, just the the revenue is um, is slightly where it's lacking. And obviously, in a kind of growing economy, the revenue should be picking up with the um, with the profits and yeah, so there's definitely a lot of a lot of questions to be asked about the state of the um, the, the U.S. economy is doing well, um, but the the consumer does not really seem to be participating. Retail sales have been a bit lackluster. We're going to see those again uh, later in the month, uh, later in the week. Sorry, on Friday it's U.S. retail sales report, and that that's kind of a big one, I think, because um, really they have, even though there's been record consumer confidence consumers have not actually been putting that through into going out and buying things and uh, so that is obviously a bit of a worry particularly for the retail stocks um, going into the Christmas period when that's when they get a lot of the uh, the annual earnings just in that in that one final quarter the other thing I think to, to bear in mind if this is going to cover you know both US stocks UK stocks um, you know the, the Germany 30 the, the US dollar is more like a broad theme. Obviously, you can trade it more directly through the, the China A50 or the Hong Kong 43, but I think the Chinese data this week is going to be one to keep an eye on. Um, we've got uh, we've had the CPI out today. Um, that was slightly under expectations. Trade data was at the weekend. That was slightly above. Um, this, the trade surplus improved, but it wasn't it wasn't so hot on the the the, uh, the imports front which shows a bit of a sort of lack of domestic demand, which is where China are trying to orientate themselves. But in the rest of the week, on Thursday will be a big one for China, in Chinese data, industrial production and retail sales, and uh, foreign direct investments released on Friday. So that's the sort of backdrop. Um, you know, the reason we saw this big plummet in the in the, the US 30 and the, the other world indices was the sort of fears over global growth. It was a bit more orientated towards Germany, um, and and Europe, but in, the, in very much in the background is um, is China, and the slight slowdown there, although that has been tepid recently by sort of bouts of stimulus from the um, People's Bank of China. They've even done a little minor bit of QE, um, just pumping money straight into the banks for for to be used um, as loans into the, the broader economy. So that, that's kind of uh, the, the private survey data and the um, official statistics have improved a bit recently from China. And, uh, you know, you could probably largely attribute that to uh, the stimulus that the economy has received. So another big thing, you know, will be, um, just like last week with the, the ECB, um, gov you know, government and central bank stimulus, the same thing in China. We've got to constantly watch out for what the People's Bank of China and the, the Chinese government are doing to, to prop up their economy. Um, both for stocks, who uh, like more stimulus, and um, you know, if you are trading perhaps copper, that, that's a big one. Uh, that's a kind of direct way of trading this kind of Chinese data. 
and copper's been holding around this 300 level, three dollars per pound for quite a while. I'll just bring that up just as a by the by. This is the one week chart, so you can see what we're kind of dealing with here. It's been a big sharp drop off, and then we're kind of in what you you'd essentially call a triangle pattern. So it certainly could break up through the hypotenuse here, the, the diagonal line, but you know you, the default assumption probably would be towards a break of the base. And I, I did a um, a YouTube video on this um, a little while back. It's a kind of longer term situation, but if we move substantially down through 300, even down to 290, I think it will we're at risk. We've got some support a little bit down below there, but really you can see this has been the the line in the sand, and this is probably going to be largely triggered by. Um, events in China, either a lack of belief in further stimulus or just the, the data dropping off despite the stimulus that's been done. Um, flipping back to the, the US there to you, because of the extent of the steepness of this decline, it makes sense to kind of dig into the details a bit. Um, we're above all the moving averages, you know, there really is, a, is an uptrend, so selling is a distinct risk unless you're a you know, you've got deeper pockets and a sort of longer term position in mind. I mean, it's got to correct a bit in some point, but you're really going against the flow if you do. Um, you've seen that really these, it has, the, the momentum has slowed a bit. We saw these kind of large moves off the MA going on here, but now we touch the MA and sort of just start drifting into it again. So we are trending higher, but there's definitely a bit of a slowdown happening, and you can see that. Um, in terms of how the, the the markets reacted to the prior highs, you know, if you look here, there's the high. It's barely got down, you know, barely got down to it. You know, break through this level, we we didn't we haven't seen that again yet. Big acceleration off there. Um, you know, that was uh, was that that I think that was when the um, Bank of Japan announced their uh, stimulus measures. Um, yep, that looks about right. So big move off there. Haven't got back down to that level since, but making these highs went pretty sideways towards the end of last week. Very sideways, tested the level again, broke through. But there's that high, tested the level again almost straight away. And that's what we're dealing with at the moment. So, you know, with the benefit of hindsight, you've done a, a very kind of short-term trade would have been, you know, these are the highs, broke through, retest, up to the highs again, but we are kind of already at the highs again now. So, if it comes down again, it's not going to be as strong a signal as it when it happened the first time. Um, but what we could get through is, a, is another move higher. And if you expect this kind of low volatility, high uptrend to continue, um, it'd be a breakthrough and then a, a retest of the high again. You know, if 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 this same pattern is going to continue. Um, but this uh, this. 21 period uh, moving average on the four hour chart has been working pretty well in terms of holding up this trend. So that's something to, to bear in mind if that breaks. Again, one indicator by itself is, is not enough to trigger a trade per se, but if you factor a few different things in, maybe you draw yourself a, a trend line, um, a uh, reversal candlestick on the daily chart perhaps, <coughs> um, maybe even a chart pattern. On the daily chart, then you can start putting it all together in terms of this 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 uptrend's maybe about to roll over. Certainly, pretty overstretched at the moment, and it looks like it's slowing down. But that's not to say that we can't have some really solid earnings, which we're still in earnings season coming out and triggering us up to, to new levels. You've got to assume the trend's your friend until it until it ends. Um, now, different picture in in, uh, in the UK and Europe really. Um, Rather than being right past the highs, um, you can see that this is the the FTSE in this the, the the UK 100 in this range that we've been in for quite some time, and this big move down went and tested the bottom of the range. So it's okay. We are strictly speaking in sideways mode. We're not in a complete collapse, but certainly this was a warning sign because you could have said that you know previously we we're in something more like a sort of rising trend broke right through that, but now we're back down in this more sort of sideways channel again. So the the, the risk that uh, we face at the moment is you see there's this um, uh, this this low here, which we I did have a line at the low here. We've moved through that a bit, so I've removed it. Um, but that still kind of is in play, this kind of dip level here. 
Um, you can see the closing prices fit in quite well with the 61.8% retracement of this drop. You can see it a bit more clearly on the four hour chart. This is the move. Kind of a reversal um, pattern here. Um, something along the lines of a reverse head and shoulders. Not the strongest pattern, but you know, there's the left, the uh, inverse head and shoulders, uh, the left head, the head, and the, the right shoulder. You know, moved up through, tested. Yes, and but you know we're struggling at the the 61.8 percent level, which, as I mentioned, kind of corresponds with this consolidation area on the four-hour chart and that um, low we were referencing over here on the daily chart. So again, the trend is up. You can, we're only up, six, uh, up to the 61.8 uh, 61 percent retracement of the drop in the UK, whereas compare that with the US, where they're up at new new highs. <coughs> So distinctly weaker performance in the UK, and that probably just all centres back around uh, the reason for the big drop in the first place in the US. Um, they were sort of following Europe lower, really. All the, all the markets are globally correlated, and there was concerns in the US that these, um, you know, the, the poor growth in Germany, etc., might translate to earnings. It hasn't happened so much, so they've they've gone onto new highs. But in Europe, the problems still persist, and the UK um, obviously does a lot of trade with Europe, and um, the, the you know the Bank of England, which issued their inflation report uh, this week on, uh, on Wednesday, um, you know they've already been saying that uh, there is a risk to the UK recovery because of um, because of Europe. So that's why the FTSE is not really, you know, it's, it's, it's uptrending, and we could certainly break through the 61.8 percent. Again, assume that the trend is going to work. But we're definitely at risk factors here. I'm kind of eyeing this this high. We've been back and sort of vaguely tested it. Um, if we test it but don't get through the high again, then drop below it, then we've got this trend line of support below, um, but sort of this would be the major line in the sand. This is the first sign, this line, and then this this line here, right at that 6500 level, if we get below there, doesn't mean you'd trigger a trade right at that, because we'd probably be due a bounce, but you know, once you get through there, you've got to start thinking the market looks a bit weaker, then maybe you look for better price levels to... Um, uh, to, to go the other way in the market. And that's not really fighting the trend because, again, if you look at this this um, daily chart, um, we've seen a higher high there and we've seen a higher low. But below this 6444, that's the official kind of low that you'd be looking at. Below there, that'd be a break low in the, day, in the downtrend. And we're still below the 200-day SMA, so the kind of longer-term perspective, we're kind of we're still in that kind of downtrend-type territory. So it's not an altogether bad idea shorting the market under the 200-day. You know, whereas if you're above it, perhaps you'd be a bit more hesitant to do so because you know this is a sort of mark with the longer-term trend of things. Uh, similar picture in Germany, as I was about to say. Um, so here, what we alluded to, and you may have seen in the uh, the chart forum, is a sort of uh, head and shoulders pattern on the longer term picture. We broke through it. You know, had the pattern really held together, we would have kind of fallen low from there. It's, um, you know, a lot of people are looking at this pattern, and when sometimes when it's this obvious, it doesn't work. So that's kind of what's happened in this case. But we are back at both a combination of the 21 week and 50 week SMAs and we saw a sort of doji looking candlestick last week where we did push higher but we just couldn't sustain the gains. FTSE ended the week a bit higher but the the, um, the German DAX as we traded the Germany 30 closed ended up closing lower. Um, so potential risk that this would be the, the, end, the end of it, sign of exhaustion there, again that one candle by itself, but you put it together with the MAs, um, I've taken the Fibonacci off because I think I, I just wasn't finding it that useful, I think we went through the 61.8 if I remember, from this decline at least, we have been through the 61.8 from, from there, but you know from the from the very top, that's kind of we're in that vicinity, that kind of two thirds retracement vicinity, similar to the uh, to the foot two.
so there's this um, if you're wondering what that line is it makes a bit more sense from the daily it's basically this area here where we saw a slight bounce then the price dropped through retested again and then we're kind of and that's where we are there so we've, we've come off pretty hard from there um, on, the, on the daily chart on Friday we're bouncing back a bit today but again if a failure through these kind of levels we've kind of made a new low on the four hour chart you know that's a low we kind of got through there again if we roll down over through this 50 ma maybe a trend line you want to draw through there um and it's um and then this this rally may uh, may may peter out let's um let's have a look at oil now this is something i referenced in the insights today um, this is on the shorter term picture. To make a bit more sense of why you might believe this this breakout would be happening, if we just flip over to the weekly chart, you can see that we've just uh, this was the low made in in June, I believe it's June 2012. So, yeah, um, and we're sort of we're bouncing off there on, the, on a weekly basis. Last week still closed distinctly down, but yeah, we did kind of come off the lows towards the end, and it does correspond with this low here. And then the very bottom from um, in uh, September 2011 was 75, and that's that's been a level a lot of people are referencing in terms of um, how much Saudi Arabia would tolerate in terms of price declines before they did a price cut. Um, also, the product, uh, the, the profitability of U.S. production for oil uh, below 75, I think they'd have to close down a bit of the production over there. So a lot of people are talking about that round number, and we do have this technical figure. So. Some reason to believe there could be a bounce from here, and certainly in the short term at least, we've got this triangle pattern which has broken out, retested, and now we're up at the highs again, or just above the highs, and uh, coming up into this uh, these lows here, right around that 80 mark, um, which is the which is a big one for WTI. We're up through 80 again, then we could be looking back at uh, move back towards 84, and um, if we can get through 84, then we're you know the, the trend really has kind of turned around. Uh, gold is always, always an interesting barometer of what happened. This really did benefit from the um, the, the the week um, NFP on Friday. We saw some sharp drops. Let's um, get a bit more perspective on this. So this is the kind of bigger term picture. And then I did, I did a snapshot video on just how, just how weak this could get. Um, if you take this as a sort of pennant type pattern where Sometimes the the bottom of the pennant will be sloping upwards. Typically, um, you could use that. Um, I've just drawn a, a base, a flat base, uh, 1,180. Drop down to there. Um, if you use that that projection down to the base, and then from the breakout area, would put us about 575 dollars per ounce in gold. So that's a bit of an extreme price projection, obviously, but. Um, just give you an aware, you know, an aware of the possibilities and the, the significance of this um, 1180 break. So what we're dealing with at the moment is um, a, re a retest of this breakout area. Um, so you know, you see the prices surged up on Friday, um, perhaps lulling people into a bit of false sense of security, and we're just coming off a bit, a bit unsurprisingly, around this 1180 type area which is the base of this um, this pattern. Not to say we can't push through it. A lot of people are going to have their eyes on this. So um, certainly a chance of pushing up further into the range again. But to me, it's um, it's looking pretty weak, given that, given that close below the 1180 that's held up for so long. Uh, not a lot of U.S. data this week to, to really trigger the moves in gold. Um, it perhaps just the, the retail sales towards the end of the week. Um, it may follow the direction of, of crude, um, which may be largely affected by the um, crude, crude stocks report on Wednesday. Currencies we talked a bit about at the front at the start. Um, I did. I think bring up this chart for the pound. 
let's just show where we are here. It, it doesn't look entirely dissimilar to um, to oil, and you know the reason for that is th these moves are largely dollar related. So that's the bigger picture that we're um, we're, you know, we're down through this 50% mark and approaching the 61.8% retracement of this big rally that we saw since 2013. Now, there's been a lot of divergence happening here. Each each one of these lows has been accompanied by higher RSI. It's not quite translated into a reversal yet. We had the potential for that to happen here. It didn't quite happen. We've moved and made new lows. So the trend is still very much down, but against declining momentum. So, in the sh so we've dropped through here, but we're seeing a bit of a bounce back, so we've just got to think about where where perhaps the market could turn around. You can see it's approaching this would be a this kind of spike level. It's what we're dealing with at the moment. Perhaps this consolidation is where we broke through here and then right at the one sixty that's the sort of uh, psychological number that everyone's paying attention to. So we could get up as far as there again or maybe just below it before rolling over again. Euro is right up and testing 125 handle at the moment. Um, it's broken through a few levels that you might have expected to see some declines from. So that was the first one. You can see it bounced off there, came down a bit, but next candle was able to get through it. Able to get through the 21 day, uh, 21 period on the um, on the four hour chart. And now, having broken through these kind of closing type levels, right back at 125 again. Trend is still down, but yeah showing a bit of uh, a bit of strength in the face of the downtrend still very much um, according to the RSI into this kind of bearish zone though below the 50 and even below the 40 so we're testing the 40 again now that may correspond with a, a move up here we've got the 21 day it may correspond with the, um, the the 50 on the RSI So I think we've sort of covered most of the markets here. If you guys have any other markets you wanted me to cover, um, let me know. But I think generally there's been uh, sort of, we had the, the US midterm elections last week. Um, a lot of people throwing around the idea that the six months following the US midterm elections, uh, particularly the midterms associated with the last term of the US president, um, you know, the, the, the second of his two terms in office, um, tend to be the strongest six months statistically out of the four-year presidential cycle. But we obviously had had a pretty pretty rapid return in stock markets of late, so this year could end up being an exception. But um, based on that past seasonal data, you know, it's theoretically a strong six months that we're, we're about to see in the next two quarters. But, uh, you know, the timing of that could be interesting because the general consensus is that the first rate hike for the US would happen mid 2015 so if you go you know if you put those two together the six months following these elections and the, the timing of the first rate hike maybe there would be some distinct risk to markets if especially we saw some some rising going into that you know, that having having had pretty decent earnings having kind of seemingly got past the, the weak growth in Europe, US stocks at least could could maybe just um, keep rising until that kind of seasonal barrier and those um, that uh, um, the, the first rate hike really become a prominent issue. As I said, we've seen, a, we've seen, been some, seen some steep rises, but the trend is still up, so it's just a, another factor to keep in mind. Okay, well, um, yep, not seeing any uh, any further questions here. Should I do that? I'll, I'll um, cover that after the official recording here. But um, otherwise, hope that was useful. Good luck for, for trading this week. Uh, this is Jasper Lawler signing off for this week's webinar.